coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Dates are set for FAA UAS Symposium Remotely Piloted Edition. CBP monitors Minneapolis protest with a predator. And a U.S. Navy laser disables a UAV. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm Sophie Herlock. The two-part virtual event for the revised FAA UAS Symposium, Remotely Piloted Edition, Episodes 1 and 2 will take place on July 8th through the 9th and August 18th through the 19th. Episode 1 will focus on UAS traffic management and international UAS integration. UAS integration pilot program updates and public safety operations will be the focus of Episode 2. Each event will feature keynote presentations, expert panels, guided and non-guided networking discussions, one-on-one -on -one meetings with experts in the FAA UAS Support Center, and how-to sessions with live Q&A. The annual symposium, which is co-hosted by the FAA and AUVSI, brings together industry and safety professionals, technology experts, and regulators to share safety information and updates among the UAS community. If you would like to register for this virtual event, you can do so by going to faauas.auvsi.net. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. Due to the effects COVID-19 has been having on events, gatherings, and travel, MultiGP has decided to reschedule their international open. The new date for the event will be August 12th through the 16th at the Academy of Model Aeronautics in Muncie, Indiana. EHANG obtained the world's first commercial pilot operation approval to use passenger-grade autonomous aerial vehicles for the purpose of air logistics. The approval came from the Civil Aviation Administration of China and is for the EHANG 216 AAV. EHANG has also become the first AAV company approved by a national aviation authority to conduct commercial pilot operation for the category of 150 kilogram plus heavy lift air logistics. Uebos and King Abdulaziz City for Science and Technology Saudi Arabia are collaborating on the development of the Saker 1C unmanned aircraft, the newest member of the Saker male UAS family. The Saker 1C is capable of carrying various payloads, including SAR imagery and coherent change detection, gyro stabilized EOIR gimbal, and digital video data link tactical UAV. The aircraft's payload capacity features have been increased to 660 pounds in comparison to the Saker 1B. Collins Aerospace, L3 Harris Technologies, and Thales USA have all been selected to provide systems engineering and integration services to build, implement, and operate North Dakota's statewide network for flying UAS beyond visual line of sight. The companies have been contracted to work with the Northern Plains UAS test site to enable real-world, commercial, and public Beavlos UAS operations in North Dakota. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer, offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design. The Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, the Light Sport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrel is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrel Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrel-usa.com. Swift Fuels proudly introduces the Forever Avgas STC. One simple upfront purchase entitles the Forever STC certificate holder to receive all current and future Avgas STCs that the FAA issues to Swift Fuels. The best part? It's priced today at only $100, and the prepaid certificate never expires. Get your Forever Avgas STC today at swiftfuelsavgas.com. Like most of you, we're still working from home. We miss being around pilots. But the most important thing right now is to mitigate your risks and use this time productively while we all get through this. Folks, King Schools is open and we're 100% operational. We're making sure that your courses work and are available for you 24-7. We look forward to the time when we can see you again at the airport.
A May 29th flight of a Customs and Border Protection Predator seen operating over Minneapolis during protests over the death of George Floyd has caused some public backlash by those who are criticizing the use of mass surveillance on protesters exercising their First Amendment rights. The drone was identified by investigative journalist Jason Palladino who tweeted, now at CBP Predator Drone CPB-104, circling over Minneapolis at 20,000 feet, took off from Grand Forks Air Force Base. Once the matter received public attention, CBP released a statement saying, Earlier today, a U.S. Customs and Border Protection Air and Marine Operations Unmanned Aircraft System was preparing to provide live video to aid in situational awareness at the request of our federal law enforcement partners in Minneapolis. The Unmanned Aircraft System provides live video feed to ground law enforcement, giving them situational awareness, maximizing public safety while minimizing the threat to personnel and assets. After arriving into the Minneapolis airspace, the requesting agency determined that the aircraft was no longer needed for operational awareness and depart it back to Grand Forks. CBP AMO routinely conducts operations with other federal, state, and local law enforcement entities to assist law enforcement and humanitarian relief efforts. According to reports, the drone was unarmed. However, the House Oversight Committee did send a letter to Chad Wolf, acting secretary of Federal Department Homeland Security, requesting an explanation on why the drone was used. On May 16th, amphibious transport dock ship USS Portland successfully disabled an unmanned aerial vehicle with a solid-state laser technology maturation laser weapon system demonstrator. LWSD is a high-energy laser weapon system demonstrator developed by the Office of Naval Research. LWSD's operational employment on a Pacific Fleet ship is the first system-level implementation of a high-energy class solid-state laser. Navy ships face an increasing number of threats in conducting their missions, including UAVs, armed small boats, and adversary intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance systems. The Navy's development of direct energy weapons, like the LWSD, provide immediate warfighter benefits and provide the commander increased decision space and response options. And that wraps up our show, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. I'll see you Friday.